Ramzi Barut. He is a senior research fellow at the Center for Islam and Global Affairs at Istanbul Zion University. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. So let's first start off with the meeting, the expected meeting. It's uh, expected to happen momentarily between Trump and Netanyahu. What can we expect to come out of it? We do know that there's a frosty relationship there. But this meeting, as reports suggest, is aimed at revitalizing that relationship ahead of the elections in November. So if we if we are to separate between the rhetoric that is emerging from various American politicians, including statements made by the like of Biden and 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 even Kamala Harris herself and, and Nancy Pelosi and others, you will find that the action on the ground indicates that no matter what Americans say or don't say, their support for Israel continues to be as strong and as committed as the first day of the war. Everything else since then has been nothing but rhetoric. They have um, done more than what was required of them to do in Gaza, and they have been part of that genocide. Now, whatever meetings that Netanyahu is going to hold with American officials, um, it, he will two things. Number one, they can't possibly give him any more than they have already given him. I mean, what is bigger than the bunker buster in American military arsenal? What's bigger than the 2,000 pound bombs that have been robbed on neighborhood in Gaza, devastating generations of people, entire families, extended families completely gone because of the American support? What can they do more than they have already done? What can they do more than they have already done at the Security Council to prevent any meaningful action your previous speaker from Ramallah was right. He was talking about sanctions and the like. But who has prevented any tangible, meaningful action as far as the Israeli genocide in Gaza is concerned? The Americans have. So I don't really expect anything new to occur as far as additional support. But mm -hmm. here's one little problem that I think many people are not talking about. Yes, of course, sanctions scares Israel and other factors scare Israel, and the delegitimization of the Israeli regime scares Israel. But something else also scares Israel, the Palestinian people themselves, their resistance. And it's a very simple way of actually finding out that this is the case or not. Imagine if Palestinians in Gaza did not resist. There would be nothing to be speaking about. There would be no reason for Netanyahu to come and give a speech. And if he did give a speech at the Congress, it will be a triumphant speech, a speech of victory, of how Finally, civilization, in his own language, of course, has won over barbarism. Mm -hmm. Well, it didn't, and he does not represent civilization. But even if he does, his war in Gaza is unfinished, and I don't think there is any possible victory for him in the Gaza Strip. So having said that, with the Palestinian resistance, how much pressure do you think is on Netanyahu, both within Israel and the U.S., looking at the rhetoric that we're hearing uh, from the likes of Kamala Harris, because coming out of the meeting with her and Trump, she was very, she had a tougher tone compared to Biden uh, and other political figures when she said the war must end. I, I think it's, I, I think Kamala Harris' statement is, is indeed important. And I think it has to be separated from the kind of tone underscored by the likes of Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House. Because Pelosi was also quite harsh on Netanyahu. She said, this is the worst presentation ever given by a foreign leader at the U.S. Congress. And, and I think the cliche of that sentence, or the immediate impact, rather, of that sentence, kind of quite interesting, if not encouraging. But if you read the rest of that sentence, it says, because he has not presented a plan to release the hostages. Nothing about the Palestinians. Nothing about, according to Lancet magazine, if the war stops now, immediately, the number of Palestinians who would be killed as a result of the war and its consequences is 186,000 mm. Palestinians. Nothing about those people. Nothing about the 10,000 Palestinians. Many of them are children and women who are held in Israeli prisons. As far as Pelosi is concerned, nothing but the few Israeli hostages in Gaza matter. What's different about Harris's statement is that she said, she referred to the humanitarian situation. Of course, this is not a humanitarian crisis in the sense that a volcano has hit Gaza. It's a political crisis resulting from American weapons given by Harris and right. Biden and others to Israel. But at the same time, it's still important 
to underscore that indeed there was some kind of a mention, however bashful, mm -hmm. that Palestinians actually do deserve and have the right to exist. All right, Ramzi Barut, we'll leave it there for now, but thank you so much for being with us here on the News Hour. I appreciate it.